Lesson 25. You're expected to... Page 62. Conversation. A. Listen. Dan is going to China for the first time. What customs does Sarah tell him about? So, what are some of the things I need to know when I'm in China? Okay. Well, you're supposed to take off your shoes before you enter someone's home. Okay. That's the same in Japan and Korea. That's right. And when you visit someone's home, it's the custom to bring a small gift. Okay. But in China, if someone gives you a gift, you're not supposed to open it right away. Got it. Thanks for the tips. Page 62. Conversation. C. Listen. Write the three extra sentences you hear in the conversation. Practice the new conversation. So, what are some of the things I need to know when I'm in China? Okay. Well, you're supposed to take off your shoes before you enter someone's home. Okay. That's the same in Japan and Korea. That's right. And when you visit someone's home, it's the custom to bring a small gift. Just don't give a clock. Okay. That's good to know. But in China, if someone gives you a gift, you're not supposed to open it right away. That would be very impolite. Got it. Thanks for the tips. Page 63. Pronunciation. A. Listen and practice. Notice how longer sentences are divided into thought groups. There may be a slight pause between them. 1. It's polite to shake hands when you meet someone for the first time. 2. It's impolite to open a gift in front of the person who gave it to you. Page 63. Pronunciation. B. Listen. Then practice the sentences. Pay attention to the thought groups. 1. You're expected to greet the oldest person first. 2. It's the custom to take a small gift when you visit someone's home. Lesson 26. What does it mean? Page 64. Conversation. A. Listen. What is Emma's favorite proverb? What does it mean? Do you have any favorite proverbs, Emma? I really like laughter is the best medicine. What does it mean to you? It reminds me to find humor during difficult times. What about charity begins at home? What do you think it means? I think it means that the most important thing is to care for your own family. I'm trying to learn lots of proverbs, but it's taking me a long time. Don't worry. Rome wasn't built in a day. Page 65. Listening. B. Listen. Five people are discussing different situations. Which proverb would be appropriate to say to them? Number the proverbs in Part A from 1 to 5. There's one extra. Number 1. I was watching TV last night. One of those talent shows? There was this one guy that got up to sing. He looked kind of strange. He wasn't very good looking, and he wasn't dressed very well. I wasn't expecting much, to be honest. But then he opened his mouth and started to sing. The audience went crazy. He was incredible. I wasn't expecting him to be so talented. Number two. I have this nephew. 
His name is Johnny, and he's a pretty good kid. I try to act as a role model for him, you know, to teach him right from wrong. I give him advice and tell him how to behave, but he doesn't always do what I tell him. He sometimes acts just like me, even if it's not the best way to act. It's frustrating. I wish he'd listen to me more and not just copy what I do. Number three. I saw this Italian motorcycle that looked really cool. I decided right then and there to buy it. I couldn't really afford it, but I bought it anyway. Well, it's been giving me headaches ever since. I don't have a place to park it, so I have to pay for a parking spot. And I didn't know, but it uses a lot of gas. Gas is really expensive these days. It seemed like a good idea at the time, but I know now I should have thought about it before buying it. Number four. I just got my exam results this morning, and I did really poorly. I wanted to study last night for my exam, but my friend called me and invited me to a movie. I went, and then we went out for pizza. I got home really late, so I didn't study at all. And of course, I didn't do well. I'm so stupid. Why didn't I stay home and study last night? Number five. Last month, I won some money in a contest. I just entered and won. How lucky is that? Anyway, after I got the prize money, I went a little crazy. I took a short vacation with my friend Wendy. I took her to Hawaii with me. I bought some nice clothes, ate at a few expensive restaurants, and before I knew it, I spent all my prize money. It's like it just disappeared. My life doesn't feel that different, almost like it never happened. Lesson 27. What will happen if... Page 66. Conversation. A. Listen. Which picture is about the weather? Which picture is about good luck? Look at that cat. You know what that means. No, what? If a cat washes behind its ears, it will rain soon. Do you believe that? Of course not. I know another one about cats. What will happen if you see a white cat at night? I have no idea. You'll have bad luck. I wonder why. But if you want to avoid the bad luck, you must turn and walk away. Here's one. If a cat sneezes three times, you'll have good luck. Hey, is it raining? Page 67. Listening. A and B. It's great that we finally set the date for our wedding. I'm sure the weather in June will be nice. Now the real fun can start. The wedding planning. Um, I guess so. Do you know the old saying, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue? I need to think about the blue part. Isn't that just a superstition? Will there be bad luck if you don't do that? You never know. If it is a superstition, I believe in it. Not me. What about the one about not seeing the bride before the ceremony? That it's unlucky for the groom to see the bride in her wedding dress before the ceremony? I believe in that one. Why ask for bad luck? I don't think it brings bad luck. But I'll be getting ready with my sisters and girlfriends anyway. You know, my mother told me once that it's okay for the bride to look in the mirror before she leaves for the ceremony. Of course. Why not? Yeah, I agree. What I didn't know is that it was bad luck for her to look in a mirror after she leaves for the ceremony. I've never heard that. It sounds like we're both a little superstitious about some things. I suppose. 
So where should we go on our honeymoon? Well, if we look at the calendar and... Oh, no. What? Our wedding date is June 13th. Right. Beautiful summer weather. That's a Friday. So? We don't have to get married on a weekend. I know, but Friday the 13th? Oh. Oh, no. No, no, no. That's too unlucky. We have to change it. I agree. I hate that day. Something bad always seems to happen. Lesson 28. It must have been... Page 68. Conversation. A. Listen. Does Nina think the lights were from a UFO? Why not? Did you hear about those strange lights over the city on Sunday night? No, I didn't. Apparently, a lot of people saw bright lights moving across the sky. They thought the lights were from a UFO. I doubt it. It must have been a plane. Maybe. But there were lots of them, and they were moving around in circles. It could have been a flock of birds. Birds move around in circles sometimes. It couldn't have been birds. Birds don't have lights attached to them. Whatever it was, it couldn't have been a UFO. Why not? Because there is no such thing. Conversation, Part C. Listen. Write the three extra sentences you hear in the conversation. Practice the new conversation. Did you hear about those strange lights over the city on Sunday night? No, I didn't. I was out of town. Apparently, a lot of people saw bright lights moving across the sky. They thought the lights were from a UFO. I doubt it. It must have been a plane. Maybe, but there were lots of them, and they were moving around in circles. It could have been a flock of birds. Birds move around in circles sometimes. It couldn't have been birds. Birds don't have lights attached to them, and they were really big. Whatever it was, it couldn't have been a UFO. Why not? How do you know? Because there is no such thing. Page 69. Pronunciation. A. Listen and practice. Notice how have is reduced in these sentences. 1. You must have seen a plane. 2. It couldn't have been a UFO.